Good evening guys, this is Geronami once again. Welcome to USMLE videos. And uh, this evening I want to talk a few minutes about uh, statins. Thank you very much for taking some time this evening to watch this video. And as always, you are welcome to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net. Let us uh, talk a few minutes tonight about statins. As you know, there are many statins in the market. Lovastatin, Atorvastatin, Pravastatin, Simvastatin, Rosvastatin. These statins, I mean today, they are one of the most commonly prescribed drugs. I mean in general. Because they have a role in reducing cholesterol level in human body and also in preventing acute coronary syndromes. That's a very important point. You see, statins are not just reducing LDL level. They also have anti-inflammatory property. And as you know that atherosclerosis, the principal pathological mechanism that causes the buildup of plaques in arterial walls, it is an inflammatory process. So atherosclerosis is an inflammatory process and the statins are anti-inflammatory drugs. So they have a role in preventing acute coronary syndromes. They have a role in preventing the formation of atherosclerosis. They also have a role in actually stabilizing the already formed plaques. That's why nowadays it's uh, almost uh, a common practice to start a statin after a patient has acute coronary syndrome. I mean, without any relationship with the LDL levels. For example, you got a patient, he has uh, acute coronary syndrome. You measured his cholesterol, LDL, HDL, everything is quite normal. Even in those circumstances, it is actually a good thing to start them on a statin because statins help reduce the incidence of uh, atherosclerosis. Now, the first thing always is to educate the patient to make some changes in their diet to reduce fatty intake. The second thing is to start them on a statin. Now, these drugs uh, should be avoided in pregnant patients, in women who are breastfeeding, or in women who are actually planning a pregnancy in the near future. Because these drugs are not known to be safe during pregnancy. The other thing is, they should not be used in children but there are quite a few exceptions. If a child has homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, you can use statins in those patients. And in even a select patients who have heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, you can still use the statins in these patients. Now let us talk a few minutes about uh, uh, chemistry and uh, pharmacokinetics. Lovastatin and simvastatin, they are inactive lactone prodrugs that are hydrolyzed in the gastrointestinal tract and uh, become their active forms. And these medications all have their first pass metabolism in the liver. So the principal organ is liver and the absorbed dose is excreted in the bile. And they are most actively absorbed with the food. That's why we encourage patients to take these medications with food. The mechanism of action, and you know the chemistry, HMG coa reductase, how it plays a role in the formation of uh, mevalonate. And before that, in the formation of HMG coa reductase intermediate. So HMG coa intermediate is being stopped. In fact, these statins are structural analogs of HMG-CoA intermediates. So they 
compete with HMG queer erectage for this substance and it they inhibit the activity of HMG queer erectage and the, on the other hand what you need to remember is these statins they increase the effectiveness of LDL receptors so the LDL receptors become very very active and they take the LDL within the human body and catabolize it. That's why LDL values get reduced by the use of statins. The next point we need to remember is therapeutic uses and dosage. All these statins are being given in a different doses and you don't have to struggle to remember those doses. But these drugs are given in the evening. Why? Because cholesterol synthesis occurs during the night. So by giving them in the evening, except for atorvastatin and rosuvastatin, we are actually maximizing their efficacy and efficiency. And finally, toxicity. Expect many, many questions from this part. And as I have mentioned earlier, most of these medications are metabolized through liver. So they have this propensity to cause hepatic toxicity. That's why you need to do liver function tests at the baseline and also every 6 to 12 months after you start people on statins. And aminotransferase, many people will have minor increase in aminotransferase and you can still start them on statins provided you can monitor those aminotransferase levels. But if they become like aminotransferase rise by more than three times, then you should stop these medications because that is the point when these people get hepatic toxicity and finally liver failure. The other thing you need to remember is the creatine kinase activity. Minor increases in creatine kinase activity is okay, but when they markedly rise, that is the problem. That means myoglobin is being reduced in these, by the activity of these statins. And that myoglobin can finally cause liver um, sorry, kidney failure. So hepatic toxicity, kidney failure due to creatine kinase activity. And also when you give these statins with uh, other enzymes that act through their uh, hepatic enzymes, you need to be careful because the drug concentrations in the serum, they ultimately increase. So those are the main points I want to mention tonight. And if you have any other points, please feel free to put them in our comment section. As always, visit us at www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you.